Okay, we ready? Okay. All right, so uh, it is um, Thursday, March 8th, and we had a brief executive session, and now we are in open session. And we're going to take um, Dan Pilata. He is here to um, talk to us about the construction contract notice of award. Where do you want me? Um, Come on up, right up here. Yeah. You know, we can or get the, the microphone. Sure, take them. Uh, where's the blind spot with the camera? There isn't one. <laughs> <laughs> we got you no matter where you are. Um, I, I'm sure you know by now uh, that we received five bids for the police station. Um, the lowest responsible bidder in the way this works with Chapter 149 is that the town must award uh, to the lowest responsible bidder uh, if, 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 as long as we're not over budget or the town chooses not to throw out all the bids. The recommendation to uh, the building committee was to award to the lowest responsible bidder, provided that their references checked out. Um, their references did check out. Um, they were actually wonderful references. Uh, a couple of points of, to note that their uh, DKM limit, which is a limit set by the state, uh, per job is 2.6 million. So this is a this is a, will be the largest project they've done to date. Uh, but they've done projects similar, and they actually have done two cells in a, in uh, one of the stations in Bristol County. I think it was Taunton, or Taunton, or somewhere down there. Um, so you want to come take over? No, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we would like to go forward with it, and we ask you to uh, issue the notice of award tonight. Uh, upon issuing the notice of award tonight, a couple of things trigger. Uh, first of all, uh, they have five days to get to us a payment bond, a performance bond, and the insurances as required in the project documents. The project documents, uh, front, what we call the front end of the documents, the legal portion of the, of the contract, uh, was reviewed by Copeland and Page. Their their changes that they requested were added to the contract by addenda. So we will be putting together a contract, melding in the Copeland and Page comments, and that will be sent to them to sign. Once they've signed that, they've delivered the bond, they've delivered uh, the payment bond, the performance bond, and the insurance. Uh, then we'll bring it back to to the board for their signature. Then then we're off to the races. So the amount is 2.6, or is it higher? No, the amount, uh, the, the bid for the uh, police station, uh, i got to look it up. It was 2.2. The base bid was 2.2 million. Adding the Sally Port in was an additional 109,000. Uh, it was 2.238688. Uh, adding the Sally Port, which was recommended, was 109,244. And adding uh, additional parking and widening the paving around the, the back here where it's tight was an additional 13200 The project can support both uh, both alternates and the base bid. And does that have a, uh, a percentage built in for, you know, in case they went over? Yeah. Yes. We actually uh, are carrying about... 120000 in what we call contingency. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, that contingency is for errors, uh, unknowns, um, things that come up, changes requested by the owner, and so on and so forth. Sounds good. Was this kind of within the, um, the number you were hoping for? Well, we were hoping for 2.2. Uh, we're, we're close enough to make right, it work and close. give you a fully functioning police station within the, what we presented to town meeting. Uh, we don't have enough to, to punch out through to 58, which mm -hmm. was everybody's goal. Right. But to, to fulfill the, the will of the people in, in the vote of the town meeting, uh, this fulfills that. Uh, and the town ha and the project has enough money to, right now to do that uh, completely. Great. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Um, for Dan? Yeah, I, in terms of, th there was some discussion at the uh, last uh, Public Safety Building Committee meeting that um, to stay within budget, we'd have to cut down on some of the construction oversight by you guys. Correct. Um, we, we volunteered to trim back our hours and do the, all of the change order reviews, do all of the um, 
uh, project budget monitoring and the uh, weekly construction meetings. You know, we're not running from you. Uh, we're staying, but you can't afford to have us here full time watching them build this. And this is probably one of the most simple uh, constructions that for a public building you can have. It's, a wood, it's basically a house with two cells. And I hate to say that because it's $2.3 million, but it's municipal. So um, we are quite confident between uh, uh, the electrical inspector who's on the board, the building Bob inspector, Kelly. electrical, Bob, yeah. uh, myself, <laughs> driving by probably three times a week that we'll, we'll be able to monitor it. If it becomes troublesome, or we, once we get past uh, a certain point in the project, we can revisit it. But for right now, to, to have the project go forward, we think this is the, this is, we as the OPM think it's best for the town of Plimpton to, to sacrifice the OPM. I know I'm, I shouldn't be saying this. I'm supposed to make money on this job. Uh, but it, it would be the best to get the project moving forward. So we, we as a board, are not, you're not feeling like we have to do anything in terms of arranging more construction oversight at this point? Uh, do, do, would it hurt to have more construction oversight? No, of course it wouldn't be bad to have more. Um, am I overly concerned about it? No. Uh, it's a, it's a slab-on-grade building with uh, concrete frost walls and it's wood frame construction. And all of that's going to be inspected in the inspector's office is about 150 feet from the foundation of the uh, new police station. Uh, if we weren't right next to the inspector's office, we probably would have probably made a, uh, a pitch at putting more hours in for ourselves and sacrificing furniture or sacrificing some IT work or sacrificing. But right now we don't have to do that. So we thought we'd take a... A, a look and see approach. I mean, we're under contract. We could always add hours if 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 we need to. But I, I, right now, I want to I want to see how we do. I want to see how we go. Uh, my I've already contacted the contractor. I've already had a meeting with the contractor. Um, the uh, the contractor uh, clearly knows what he's doing. Um, I think this is going to be. A tough project for him, paperwork-wise, because it gets to a different level, paperwork-wise, and both the designer and myself are going to help get that through uh, to make sure the paperwork works. But the actual construction, the subcontractors he has, are all good contractors. So we have town meeting coming up in maybe three months. As far as you're concerned, we have enough money to have a functioning building. We're not having to go back to town meeting. The question of whether you want to go back to town meeting is a political question that I'm not going to step into. Um, we will build you a building within the appropriation that you have made. Um, there's no question we can do that. Um, if I was sitting in your seat, like I did for six years up the street, I, I would probably put a placeholder on the warrant just in case, you know, there's an unknown in the in the in the ground that we don't know about. We did do borings. Uh, we think we know what exactly the soil that's out there, but you never know. We might have done four borings around a big piece of ledge in the middle. Doubt it, but it's possible. Uh, so I don't think it would hurt to have a placeholder, but I, I don't. I really don't envision us having to go back. Okay. And we, enough for furniture? We have enough for, for furniture right now. Okay. Great. When do you expect to break ground? Uh, I would be willing to bet that within, it'll depend on when you sign the contract, but about probably a week or two after you sign the contract, fences will go up. Okay. Um, Connex boxes have to be moved in the back here. We have to clear some of the area that um, you're used to um, so that they can have it because that's their space now. Uh, when they put the fence up, it's actually their space, not our space anymore. They're responsible. They're liable. That's what the insurances are all about someone gets in and gets hurt, it's their responsibility, not the town's responsibility. So there are some little rules that we deal with uh, once you've signed the contract, but I, I, I'd say probably one to two weeks after you've signed the contract, they'll get going. Is Bob Carling comfortable with this role as kind of the head inspector? <laughs> I, you'd have to ask Bob Collin on okay. that. Okay. I, I mean, I'm not going to answer for Bob. Okay. I, I, I don't think Bob wants this to do this uh, full time. No. 
Okay. I don't. Th but I, we wouldn't. We wouldn't be there full time even if we had our full contract. Uh, that we, you know, we were there 20 hours a week. We we're never there 40 hours a week. Okay. The project doesn't warrant more than 20 hours a week. Okay, Colleen, you had your hand up. <laughs> we, we did talk a little bit about having somebody else from the building department um, check in on things. And I don't know if, if the board of selectmen want to, you know, fill that out and see if that's a possibility, or if it's even, um, and that might be a conflict of interest if, if Tom's the inspector and then also checking on things. Should, shouldn't uh, sh is Tom the building inspector? Yeah. Yes. Shouldn't it won't be a, it will not be a conflict of interest because Tom himself could can act as that within the confines of the law and Tom's not responsible for the inspection of the building. Believe it or not, uh, the building is the responsibility of the designer. Uh, this is what's called controlled construction, and under controlled construction, the designer is responsible to send in affidavits monthly to the. Um, to the building department stating that things are being built properly. So there are multiple layers of, okay. of overlook here. Um, obviously, we'll meet with the building inspector and ask him what inspections he wants to do, but he doesn't technically have to. Okay. Um, he does technically have to get affidavits prior to construction and affidavits during construction, and then final affidavits when we're done that everyone, to the best of their knowledge, believes the building was built to code. So I have one more question and one comment. Or are you? Uh, uh, all of the things around that side of the building. I think everyone is aware that they need to be moved, but they may need a nudge from the board of selectmen okay. to be done in a timely fashion. We'll take a vote on that. <laughs> and actually, <laughs> that was that, move them. <laughs> that was most of my question. Is there anything else we should be doing um, in preparation for this? I don't think so. We'll have our normal hiccups. There's going to be things that aren't right. There's going to be complaints. There's going to be, why did you cut down so many trees? Um, I think, you know, we'll get a lot of that. Uh, we'll get the, the standard uh, um, roadside uh, contractor who lives in town who says we're doing it wrong and it should be this way and that way. Um, we all, every town has them. Uh, your town has, is no exception. Uh, so, you know, but we want those questions because it's possible they could be right. So we, we review all of those questions when they come in. When we get a complaint, we'll handle the complaint. You know, we don't have to be here sitting in a trailer to know what's going on on your site. Do you have enough room to make to get the equipment back in between the fire trailer and the townhouse building? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't forget. Once they've cleared, they're going to have a, their own laydown room in there before they, they do what they have to do. I mean, we, we've got a, quite an area to clear because the stormwater management's behind the new station. Okay. So my comment is I've sat in on most of the meetings. This has been going on for seven years. This guy has just been a consummate professional. I don't want to swell his head too much, but savvy, smart, okay. practical. <laughs> Colleen says stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not over yet. You want to know something? This was one of the hardest ones we've done. This, you think that because it's smaller, it's more it's not going to cost as much. It actually costs more per foot. And police stations right now are going around $450 to $500 a square foot. This is, came in at $375 a square foot, which is all Plimpton can afford. I mean, we're right to the line of what the kind of Plimpton can afford. Mm -hmm. And without, a, without a, an additional appropriation. That doesn't mean you're not getting a beautiful station. It means that your building committee looked at every little detail in conjunction with the designer and the OPM, and we scrubbed out anything that was excessive. This building is is going to be, you're, you're not going to walk in here and say, we wasted any money. No one's going to do that. But what, you're going to be really proud of the building when it's done, and you're going to, you know, you're going to have, have a 21st century police station, something that's, I don't need to tell you, has been needed for 50 years. I don't want to get locked up in the okay. gorilla cage. <laughs> So we need, we need, I, I make a motion, or maybe you'll help with the language on the not notice to award. Um, 
You can just make a motion to uh, uh, to sign the notice of award as written. Okay. I make a motion that we sign the notice of award as written. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So it has been signed. Um, do you take a copy? I will take the original. Do you have a copy already? I no. Um, do you want me to go make one? Yeah, now? I'd like you to make a copy. Uh, okay. I'll make a couple it? copies now. No, I think it's already yeah. signed. If you right. put it up, yeah. I, I, do you have a do you have a plain one too? If you can sign two, just keep one signed here. Um, we have. Colleen gave me one original that I signed. Can I make a photocopy? Sure, that's fine. <coughs> don't Thank this, you, don't Colleen and Dan, one. so much okay. for your efforts. Well, we'll, almost there. we'll just we'll wait for you to come back. I think or or or. Do we I want to wait for her? Yeah, yeah, go right please. ahead. Go right yeah. ahead. Go right Thank ahead. You. And we'll see you uh, if and when you do a groundbreaking. So, okay. Colleen, now you have free time and we can sign you up for another committee? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet? Okay. Oh, that committee will keep working. Thank you. Yeah, good night. Thank you. All right, do you want to take a yes. quick recess? Or do or? we want to do uh, the well, they're, scouts? They're or? here to um, to watch, I believe, for a badge. For you a guys badge. are watching us? Oh, <laughs> They're observing. Goodness. We didn't know that. <laughs> what an exciting meeting, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The police station. It is. Good well, so stuff. should we recess for a yeah, minute? Yeah, we take couple um, minutes. Couple minute recess until um, Liz gets back. Okay. 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 A few minutes. Before we get back, did you want? I think John's not. Okay. Ready, okay. John? Okay. All right. We wanted to have a moment of silence for uh, Ryan McDonald, who was um, killed over the weekend by a falling tree. So I'd like to have a moment of silence, please. And I would just like everyone or ask everyone to keep them, the family and their thoughts and prayers that this is, it's got to be a, a absolutely terrible time for them and um, just keep them in your thoughts and prayers. All right. Um, do we want to go into, back into the agenda? Yep. All right. So report on discussion with Ed Rose, Rocky Harvest on settlement violations. I spoke with Ed um, the day following our meeting, which would have been, I think, about uh, a week ago Tuesday. And he said that it will not happen again, that um, five of the six violations were from one driver. And um, she thought that she could get in early and that it wouldn't be a problem and that uh, m and m has uh, put a stop to it and that the second um, violation of actually the sixth violation was polar and um, they have put a stop to it as well so he assures me that it will not happen again and I, I told him you know we're in a partnership by default here and that uh, we don't want to go to arbitration because it's going to cost us money it's going to cost him money and that we ha he's got to uh, get the um, his haulers in line so that uh, we're able to work together to in uh, as harmoniously as we can so he is working on that um, next on our agenda is the earth removal draft the regulation draft do you want to pull that up on your computer Liz yeah I should be able to Really nice document. All right, so this, Linda, Letty, and Amy Cronin were uh, generous enough with their time to put together a Town of Plimpton earth removal general bylaw, and they gleaned the best from uh, neighboring communities, and I think a lot of it came from Ashland, which was, ironically enough, uh, Hubbardston. Hubbardston. And that's where a lot of our um, housing production plan came from ideas from Hubbardston. So yeah, they, uh, they seem to have their, their act together. So you want to quickly review this? I think that um, Liz has put this out to the members of the um, Agricultural Commission. Correct. And they I told review. them that they would have some time to digest it and we would set up a meeting okay. um, in the future to I suggested some names too that I think we should. Okay. 
I'd like to get it to maybe Paul Haju exactly. or um, Drew Lit, uh, Jeff Smith, somebody Jeff that's Smith involved and, with uh, um, maybe John even Jeff Norrie. Randall and John Nor. Yeah, Jeff Randall. I didn't have him. On yeah, people that we have um, contact info for those people that would be helpful, and I can you. also check with Tara and see if she has it for some. I'll have Jeff Randall. I, I'm not sure if I've got Jeff Smith or not, but um, I can look. I've got Jeff Smith. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was contacted by Brian Wick, who's involved in, uh, yep. deeply Good. involved in the cranberry industry, and he actually was going to come in tonight to chat with us about his opinion, um, but some conflicts and the late change. But he would like to come in Monday night, and I'd, okay. I'd be very interested in hearing from him even before we invite in the whole gang. Um, yeah, I would too. Um, yeah. So he, he'll be here Monday night. And, uh, I think we got a in a sense, we have to be very careful because we're only going to do it once. Um, we do, and I, I mean, I, we need this. It'll be a wonderful protection. We do have to make sure we get it right. We're doing this on the fly. Honestly, I mean, we have to understand this, and I'm not close to understanding the ramifications yet, particularly for existing operations. So, um. Well, it may be prudent just to put a uh, placeholder yeah. on the warrant because this has got a ways to go to make sure that this is the document that we want to go for at town meeting. It still needs to be reviewed. For sure. And we want to, I, I don't see, you know, I'm not sure town meeting is a, has to be a gate. I think we got to get it right and if it takes a little longer then that's just part of the process. But we certainly don't want to be ending up in a fight around it. No. No, mm. we don't. All right, so you just want to jump in to it? Were we going to review it tonight or no? Uh, um, I'm not okay. sure. I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not really ready. Okay. Um, and I honestly, I, I'm hoping for some expert opinion, both from Brian and from yeah, the Yeah, I'd kind of like to hear first okay. fellas. Okay. You know, the feedback that says, hey, these are the parts we don't like and these are the parts we do. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I did pass it along to council um, over the phone, as was discussed mm -hmm. um, at our last meeting. And they'll certainly review anything that we send to them, but they encouraged me to obtain all the comments first. Yeah get them a solid draft that's not going to change substantially, um, just for cost reasons. Absolutely. Yeah, you don't want to waste anybody's time. Um, my only concerns were that the threshold I thought was too restrictive of 300 cubic yards and that, um, that we included in activities that are not eligible for exemption it says um, that the proposed construction is a pretext for earth removal i would like to say add or agricultural use as a pretext where it's not really a legitimate agricultural use that it's just a pretext for gravel removal okay and those were really my only big things that um that popped out to me so i would yeah, love to see what um everybody comes up with yeah i was having trouble envisioning 300 cubic yards that's not much it's not i uh, sat down with a construction person who told me roughly whether it's the large trailers or whether it's a flatbed it doesn't see it's not much no at all. i don't think i think that they're going to have a problem with that that it's not going to give them enough yardage to actually maintain their property without having to come to yeah. us and get a gravel removal permit just to you know, clean up bog roads or um, I was drainage also ditches. Unclear, um, with the Plimpton sand and gravel, how does this work with them? They don't have a gravel, an earth removal operation that they're permitted by the town. Why? Because these are generally projects for the creation of property for the creation of cranberry bogs. They just have a sand and gravel operation. operation. That's, and I think it's probably grandfathered in because it's been there yeah. forever. Yeah, I don't doubt and, that. And, um, but this is something different. This is a project. It's project related where that is their business. Okay. But we'll have to make sure that it doesn't negatively right. and that there's right. language in there for, you know, yeah. grandfathering operations. Yeah, we'll have to make sure we ask the question of uh, council. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because 
Yeah, that's going to be a big one, yeah. making sure that current businesses Yeah, are Lawrence Ready Mix and, and yeah, both of right. them are, that's right. are, I didn't think are not that. impacted by this. Okay. okay. All right, so more to come on that. Um, annual town meeting preparation. The first item we didn't oh, get to, which... Uh, marijuana moratorium. Which actually fits right in under sure does. that. Okay. Do you want to pass? I have three there. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this is... Uh, you the, do you want me to read it? Good. Yes. See, look at this. I know. I this is fantastic. Having this, the document camera. Perfect. Nice. All right. So this is a proposed article to put on the warrant for annual town meeting to see if the town will vote to amend the Plimpton Zoning Bylaws Section 10 temporary moratorium on recreational marijuana establishments. So this would be to extend the moratorium to June 30th, 2019, which would give us time to get a bylaw together after the state shakes out um, the recreational marijuana laws and decide if we want to allow this in um, a particular zone or um, to ban recreational marijuana. There's lots of options. So this would give us the time we need to, um, to sort through it. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm totally in favor of that. I, I would just mention I was at the um, Massachusetts Municipal Association les legislative session last Friday, and there was some comment is that it it's not absolutely clear to all the people involved that this is going to fully protect us. I mean, it's the right thing to do, but uh, there was some concern that uh, the ongoing process of the Marijuana Commission, that um, uh, just to be aware that there's some slight chance this won't protect us. This um, being what, the article? The moratorium. Yeah, that the moratorium, that it is not impossible the implication was unlikely but possible that maybe how things unfold over the next year that someone might be able to apply. So I, I just being aware sure. of that, um, okay. I, I think this gives us another year to look at what we want to do at next year's town meeting and probably that will be the place we'll have to decide whether a ban on recreational marijuana sales is something we want to do or not to. Yeah, well, I think we need the time because if they haven't figured it out at a state level, we sure don't want to figure it out at a town level. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And have it be found yeah. that it's not legal right. or, right. Okay. So, so we need a do we motion? need a vote or we're just going to put it on there? We need a vote to send it to the planning board. Okay. Um, since it is a zoning bylaw amendment, they'll have to, to do a hearing. Process. Okay. I'll make a motion that we send the article for the temporary moratorium on recreational marijuana establishments to planning board for um, the process, the hearing processes and everything they need to do to get this on the um, warrant for annual town meeting. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you, Mark, for that. All right, um, anything else for annual town meeting preparation besides everything? <laughs> um, Well, that'll be on the um, agenda for Monday night, and maybe I'll have something by then. Okay. I'm, I'm okay for now. All right. Chapter 61A, right of first refusal policy and procedure document. I thought that was really well written, The um, what you got to us. Um, so here's the story on that. Um, I talked to uh, uh, Greg Carbo and asked him or told him that we had this draft mostly taken from the document that we all have and asked if, if they, K and P, had a template. And he said that he would get back to me and so far hasn't. Um, I think at some point I'd probably want to run this by him. I wonder if we might just vote at this point to use this as a, as a guide. Um, I don't, most, uh, most of the way the document is written is to just simply write into the document 
what is mass general law, um, and the rest of it are just kind of a guidepost of things that we should do along the way. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I, I, I would propose that maybe we kind of wait to hear back from Greg in the meantime that we use this not as a law or not anything that handcuffs us, but merely um, gives us guidance on how to proceed if we have another right of first refusal application before us. Okay. Would it be possible to make some friendly amendments? Of course. All right. My only question was um, possibly including affordable housing in in this, it says, whereas the town of Plimpton has ongoing needs for land for municipal purposes, including conservation land, and then I, I would add, and affordable housing, and finds it in the town best interest to give consideration to the opportunity. So it's basically just adding in affordable housing Great. where we say um, assigns its rights to a nonprofit conservation or affordable housing organization. Uh, that's, so I can uh, give you those. Okay, great. And then on F, I wondered if there was a way to add um, earth removal to that, where it says the purchase and sale agreement must be a bona fide offer defined as a good faith offer not dependent upon potential changes to current zoning or conditions or contingencies relating to the potential for or the potential extent of subdivision of the property for residential use of the potential for or the potential extent of development of the property for industrial or commercial use. I didn't know if that would include earth removal. You know that you can't make a bona fide offer based on um, you know securing a gravel removal permit to So it's just a question. I mean, that was really my only thing. Everything else was just kind of adding affordable housing, um, a small typo. No. Yeah, just one. Oh. And then um, of the vote to authorize the expenditure. All right, what do we have here? Last page. Town or city council meeting must be scheduled within municipalities 120-day period unless an extension of the deadline is agreed to in writing between municipality and the seller. Oh, um, I wondered if it could be 120 days after the vote to authorize the expenditure, you know, to the funds for it, rather than... That piece that's in italics yeah? is taken straight from Mass General Law. Okay. So I don't think we can change that. Okay. All right, so it is what it is. Okay, yeah. so that was really it. It was just kind of um, adding where we had all these other things, um, affordable housing. And Sorry, I think are you going to hand I'll just those give to you. Me? Yeah, I'll give you the whole thing. Okay. So, perfect. Are we voting? What are we doing tonight with this? Um, I think maybe what we're doing is accepting this as a guide on as how to proceed. Guide. Yes, as a draft, a guide. draft guide until I hear from Greg and until we have that review along the way. But just if a right of first refusal came in, um, application came in tomorrow, at least we have this as a guide to uh, give us a roadmap of how to proceed. It seems to me this should be passed by some of the people we've talked about with the earth removal. Because anybody who's in agriculture, this affects. But a lot of they it's can't MGL. Modify it, if that makes any sense, like it's it's but essentially not all of this is summarizing Mass General Law um, and I giving would, us a yeah. guide. I, I don't know. I, I don't would know. be careful on that. I I mean this is uh, from a document that's been well vetted and um, and accepted, I think, by Copeland Page. Yes. At one point. Well, why should we be afraid of passing it by the people who are going to be affected? Um. I don't think that anybody would be able to give any significant input. Well, we don't know. I mean, uh, right, but I'm saying all the all the dates and everything, um, the time frames and whatever, are all um, as laid out in Mass General Law. Um. 
So there's I mean, not it, a lot it, to yeah. argue with. It, it feels to me like it's what is in this document is what is laid out by Mass General Law and how this board wants to do the procedure that has to be done. And I think that is under the purview of this board and not others. Well, and really it's the only difference is, is that we're saying when we get these applications we want it to go to conservation we're laying out who else we want to have input into the process that's the only difference from the Anything MGL being more transparent it's by just getting more boards involved in the, the vetting of these properties to see if there's any interest in um, the town purchasing them You're not comfortable with that? Well, it's a draft, so I'm comfortable for tonight. Okay, all right. So are you okay to accept this draft as draft mm -hmm. policy? Sure. Okay, all right. So I'll make a motion that we accept the um, 61A uh, procedure for Chapter 61, 61A, 61B, right of first refusal um, uh, draft as um, a policy accepted by the Board of Selectmen until uh, further review by Coconut Page. Okay. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. So next on the agenda is 2017 annual town report. Um, I raised my hand for this one. So uh, what I was going to do was go through all of the um, minutes because this is December to, or January through December. So I can look through the minutes and then maybe next year Liz can, this could be added to her plate. So I can work on that and I'll um, try to have a draft to us, um, how about by the end of March? A couple weeks. Um, now the, the, theoretically the deadline? the deadline is March 21st or something. Um, All right, I'll have a deadline. The annual report? Yeah. Okay. I'll have a deadline to you. Um, what's our meeting before March 21st? The 19th. Okay, I'll have a deadline for the 19th, or a, a draft for the 19th. You know, I have found doing CPC for 10 million years that the previous year usually is a nice template for the next year. Obviously, things change, but that might be that might be a helpful good way. advice. Yeah. <laughs> Just change the year. <laughs> Get the old pocket lot. All right, so what's, yeah, get an old parking lot. So parking lot review. Do we have the parking lot? Yeah. Ooh. I forgot I that document. I didn't have it. Oh. I Somewhere here. Um, I, I apologize, I have not, I did not do that review. I think I've got an Move old on one. Oh, All right, so um, town administrators updates. I think I've got an old one too. Thank you, thank you. So we successfully submitted our Green Community Grant application earlier today. Down. And our application um, came in, we applied for a total of funding in the amount of $246,450. So hopefully we are successful um, with at least a portion of the application. Um, all of the audits were conducted by uh, a company called Energy Source, mm -hmm. and they did a great job with the audits and putting all the information together for me. And I worked with the state official on that so as far as putting together um, the list of projects. You can apply up to a maximum of 250000 um, So we're right there at that threshold. Um, I also included some money um, at the suggestion of, of some people that were helping me with it for administrative funds that could potentially be used for Old Colony Planning Council's help going forward if we're successful with administering the grant. Mm -hmm. um, a few of the projects that we included in the application um, are for LED lighting at Dennett Elementary, the Townhouse, Fire Station, and Library, um, Wi-Fi thermostats at the library, um, hot water pump upgrades to the townhouse and library, um, a weatherization project at the fire station, and some new ventilation sensors at the Dennett Elementary School, among others. Um, 
so that pretty much wraps that. Um, I do have just a hard copy. Um, it's all the printouts from the application that I thought I'd just pass down, just in case you're curious about what goes into that. It was a huge amount of work. Mm. Thank you. It was, and it wasn't anything that required a lot of technical knowledge. It was more just data entry and um, and that kind of thing. But it was time consuming. So I think if we're able to get some funding for Old Colony to help us out with that, um, it'd be a huge, huge weight off my shoulders as far as reporting. Yeah, and that annual else. report. Yeah. Can I suggest uh, sometime in the future, Project Two is the old townhouse. That we have lighting that shuts off, you know. It yeah, we can look at that. Um, at the time when they were going around to do the audits, they didn't want to conflict with the CPC project um, and, and some other okay. items, but yep. they can definitely audit that. Okay. You can apply for up to 250 um, every year. Okay. So we Great. can definitely add more um, and kind of go on from there. Hmm. Interesting. Wi-Fi thermostats? Really? Yeah, for the library. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could turn the temperature down on Deb. We'll fight for the clicker. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. A lot of good projects. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, I also wanted to bring up in my updates um, the roof at the old townhouse. Um, apparently during the storm, the roof did in fact sustain some damage. Um, they had somebody out there to patch it, but they did alert us that it's only a temporary fix. Really? Um, Steve Saro was is going up there um, over the next couple days to take a look and figure out how large of a fix are we talking? Is it something that we need to run through our insurance company, or is it something that can wait a little bit that may be either yeah. as part of the CPC project or just as part of general funds in the budget if we could look to do the repair. We've had a lot of claims lately with some of the storms and everything, mm -hmm. so we just don't want to see our our liability ratio affected right. negatively. Sure. So, well, Unfortunately, the CPC budget, I don't, we'd have to okay. go through the whole process again. Okay, so that's not an that option done. then. Right, um, we'd have to do it out of maintenance. Yeah. But Steve's going to take a look Good. and figure out. Would you tell him too? I went up and looked at the window that was broken. Yeah. Okay, and he's put some green plastic film over it, but it's not going to, you know, the heat is just leaking out of there. Okay. So we don't want to replace the window because we're gonna, we've got CPC right. project going forward. Uh, but maybe if he could take some plexiglass or something and just nail it in there. Yes, I can talk it's to him about that. It's on the side. Nobody will see it. And, keep the heat in the building. Okay. Um, and then also with the old townhouse, um, I received an email from John Willemson, and they have a team of volunteers who have offered to clear some of the tree and um, brush that's debris that's been accumulating on site um, and to chip all of that. But the question is really, can we give them something in writing authorizing them to do that? From a permission standpoint, I would say yes, it's all town-owned property. But the issue with that is that with it being volunteers and doing that type of work, like with chainsaws and a chipper, is that a liability? Um, you're not talking about town employees who are covered under the town's policy right. or a private contractor who's privately insured. Um, so I'm not sure, but at the same time, you don't want to do anything that, that discourages volunteerism. So I don't know if people would be willing to do it at their own risk. If that's something we want to pursue, um, I could certainly run that by council. But I think we should pursue that with council. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, they're not looking for the chipper. They're assuming that the chip is going to be done by the highway department. So they're going to go in, cut it up into lengths that then the highway department can come in and chip it. Okay. Because they don't have a chipper. Okay. So we'll run that by council then and just figure out if we need anything in place. Are you okay with that, Mike? I am. I, I'm just thinking back to when we built the boardwalk and, yeah. and we certainly were doing all that stuff. And, but right. it'd be, that should be a simple thing It's one of those things that answer. if people don't ask, it just kind of gets done. But now that somebody's asked and wants something in writing, right. giving them permission and yeah. saying that it's not going to have the town be liable, then it's kind These of opening up another... These are the people who do all, you know, the projects that you've been yeah. involved with. Right. So we want sure. to make sure that we treat them right. 
Okay, yep. so I'll check with council and figure out if we need to do anything special for that. Yeah. And this is the old townhouse? The old townhouse. Out? Okay. There's, if you look behind it, there's a bunch of trees down. Okay. And then I have a meeting at Regional Dispatch in Duxbury with Chief Dillon on March 19th. Um, FinCom did budget 50000 um, as per the Chief's recommendation for that. Um, essentially, we've, we've been receiving free dispatch services for five years or so, um, so we thought that it would be prudent to plan ahead for that mm -hmm. um, for a likely cost We'd like the, the Chief services. to negotiate that at the same rate. Mm -hmm. So Zero. actually, I've chief forgotten. Chief, the is, former chief, is that next year that 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 the five-year period? No, it was actually, Dylan. It'll be for fiscal year but nineteen. But Matt's involved with Duxbury. So the current agreement yeah. is coming Plancy, to an end. Our former chief is coming to an end this. At the end of of this fiscal year. Yeah. And is that the number that's been um, bantied about? That was an estimate that's been circulated. Um, Chief Dillon is working very hard on that to see if we can negotiate a better situation. Okay. Um, the other thing that's coming into play is that there are some communities who are looking to join. So that may affect things either mm -hmm. positively or negatively, depending on how that shakes out. So we'll attend the okay. meeting on the 19th. And mm -hmm. Duxbury was kind enough to arrange this, and we did get it for free for five years. On the other hand, by us joining them when they needed another town they became qualified for a lot of grants so it's not totally a one-way street here I mean, this we, did open them up to a lot of grants absolutely it did and they might be gently should be reminded of that <laughs> <laughs> that we'd like a check <laughs> they can pay us fifty thousand dollars and then for correspondence um we received a resignation letter from Lisa Hart of the Finance Committee, effective May 18th of this year. Um, so a candidate will be able to go on to the ballot um, who could potentially finish out her term, which goes through May 16th of 2020. Um, so so she's got two years left on her term? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, she's been an mm. asset to our finance committee for many years and she will be, <laughs> be sorely missed, missed. Um, years ago I before that. Yeah, yeah the school committee before that yeah. years ago I served on the finance committee for two years and I learned so much from Lisa um, uh, yeah uh, she's been a real uh, asset absolutely we will miss her but absolutely appreciate her service to the town too many years many years that is a nice document. Is it going to be up on the? Uh, I can put it up on the web. Or send it to us, anyways. I okay, I will do that. Yeah. And we also have a letter of appreciation for Officer Doug Mazzola that was written by Mass Real Estate Law Group and Andrew and Christina Bowman for his friendly demeanor while he was working at a recent detail. Mm. Um, they said that he was incredibly welcoming and polite and. They wrote a very nice letter to Chief Dillon, um, recognizing him for his service. I hope those get put up on the, at least the police department site. They do, and then we try to share them um, yeah, when good. we see them. That's good. very nice. Like that. And then the last piece of correspondence is the Plimpton Halifax Express. Um, there was a cultural awareness event called Noche Latina that was held at Silver Lake Regional Middle School in which students and their families were able to experience Latin American traditions, food, and dance. Um, so that looked like a really nice mm -hmm. event. Um, and then the, the new earth removal bylaw draft that we discussed earlier um, was discussed at length um, in that particular edition of the Plimpton Halifax Express. All right, we've got the parking lot. Do you want to put it up on the um, Sure, that would be great. Screen? All right, so these are the projects that um, we've wanted to keep on our radar, but not necessarily on our agenda. Some of these we've completed, and uh, others we still need to work on. 
So what we had hoped for in fall and winter, last fall and winter, was meeting with Barbara Gomez and the auditors, and I don't think we've done that yet. We, we still have need, not. We, we still need to do yeah, that. we do. And the auditors are in right now, so we need a firm date from Barbara. Okay. Do you want to work on getting a date from Barbara? Yes. To schedule a meeting? Okay. DPW projects update rusted guardrails. Tom Coulter reviewed with Jim Mulcahy. Didn't they say you're not going to get rusted guardrails and stop asking, basically? Yeah. And okay. Jim said, uh, you know, don't screw this up. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he was talking to me. <laughs> uh, he might have been. All right, so let's cross that one off. All right. Complete easement for police building project. I believe that that is still pending. I don't think the easement has been completed. I think that's true. So let's leave that one on there. Review and negotiate expiring contracts. I think that we've been doing that, haven't set. we? That yes. There's only a handful of contracts that we're actually allowed to have, isn't that correct? Okay. Correct. It's yeah. for very. It's very specific. Very by specific. Mass general law. Okay. All right. So that's good. Um, IT upgrades database software, townhouse hardware software, bylaw codification. I think so. those are all being implemented. Mm -hmm. It should stay on there because we have to uh, respond to the state on June 30th, prior to June 30th, the uh, status, which is hopefully completed. Completed, hopefully, yeah. yeah. Okay. Should be. All right, Dennett Water Treatment Project. John Wilhelmson was in here two weeks ago, almost two weeks ago mm, now. Right. I'm um, giving us an update, and um, I believe that they are going to be starting that project soon. Yeah. I, th I think it should stay on just until it's completed. Okay, so we'll leave that one. 2017 tax title land, waiting for Treasurer Colleen Moore to complete process, then we'll discuss possibilities. I think that one needs to stay on there too, that that's yeah. still uh, pending. A couple of residents have uh, approached me a couple of times because they're interested in buying some of this. So mm -hmm. it's, we need to do this when Colleen's back. Well, and uh, kind of a segue from that is I really would like for us to develop some type of policy for tax title land similar to the 61A where we're ensuring that there's no town use for this property before we were to send it to auction. I think that makes terrific sense. Okay. So yeah. maybe after town after meeting. After town meeting, we I can would love to work on it. Yeah. Actually, maybe not. I mean, it'd be similar. It wouldn't need to be big, just that. Um, yeah, no, the sole reason I wouldn't is I about town land. That, okay. Um, well, that we'll I might do have it. interested on, yeah. but I, that's a project. That's a great summer project. Okay. Yeah. All right, volunteer list. Um, we're still working on that one, and I think we're trying to communicate openings on town boards and committees so that if people are interested, that they can volunteer. Correct. All right, and I believe that's on the website, isn't it? It is, and Tara has been doing a fantastic job with her database. Um, it was actually her who got me the list of the agricultural commission members and everything um, so that's nearly complete and she's it's really came out nice good we we need to bring her in to talk about codification she is at our next meeting on next the 12th okay great yeah she's on the agenda yep. okay okay um, social media Liz has already done that and that has been a um, I think a valuable tool already communicating closures at the townhouse and and different um, things that are, yeah. are happening yeah how many I'd followers like to, do we have do you know 360 Over 300. so that's good something like that yeah We're i looked there. at it today gotta get it higher <laughs> jack it up free i don't know free something if you become a follower well yeah maybe if there was more turmoil we'd probably have more followers well, we'll probably have which is more a good followers. thing <laughs> Um, maybe with town meeting coming, that'll be the chance for us to campaign for that a little bit and just yeah. mention Absolutely. it all the time. Try to get people signed up at town meeting. Yeah. But I bet the people who come are the people who are on it. Yeah, no, Could that be. makes yeah. Yeah. The, the it's a good talk. Yeah. 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 All right, um, complete municipal aggregation. We finished that. Yay! And I, my bill went down. Really? Yes. Well, because the winter rates are considerably higher than the yeah. summer rates. Yeah, my rates. bill was um, quite a bit cheaper in February we, we than it was put in January. Something out on the web because people are still. Well, and maybe social media too. Yeah. But you could still opt in, right? At this point, even if you had opted out, will they let you opt back in? No, I, I think, think you so. can. Yes, I believe you can. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we could put something simpler, like um, the rates for Eversource are blank. The aggregation rate is X. 
Sign up. Yeah, sign up. And friend us on Facebook. Right. Okay. I like that. All right. <laughs> All right, ongoing, need occasional reporting. Maple Street Group Home Project, I think that's just on hold. There's nothing yeah, really happening with that. It's just dormant. Okay. Carver, Carver Urban Renewal Project, um, I don't think that there's anything happening with this. They're still in the permitting process. Well, we All should right. leave it on because yeah, it's going to yeah. leave it yeah. on. It I think Maple Street should probably stay yeah, on, too, because it's so in too. the midst of yeah. kind of legal okay. stuff is going to yeah. come up sooner or later. All right. Um, mass legislation regarding recreational marijuana. We are um, going for a moratorium right now. We should probably leave that on because yeah. we're going to definitely need to address that um, in the next town meeting. CEC Solar Projects, Brook Street. Is this one we're still waiting for to do a pilot on? Yep, uh, they're paying they're paying their real estate taxes, and um, the ball has been in their park for months. Okay, so um, they so haven't submitted an application yet, right? No, yeah. they haven't. Okay. So they're actually I mean, paying more than what they yeah, would be um, yeah. under the pilot. Okay. Rural school aid proposal, there's really nothing to report there, um, but we can leave it on. Jason Frazier will let us know if something develops that um, the town might be able to benefit from. Okay. Other committees and boards to be established, Economic Development Committee, um, I'd love to do that, but um, maybe After not exactly meeting. now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, down the road. Okay. Possible ways to combine services with Halifax, Fire and EMS. We um, are hoping to do some exploration of um, Fire and EMS as a shared service. Uh, assessor's office, um, we had talked about um, possibly sharing someone after, um, no, this was the assistant assessor position. Right. So we that, take that off. That's kind of going by the board. Yeah. yeah, so why don't we take that one off. Um, town accountant, that one is still a possibility. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, when at some point Barbara Gomez will be retiring, oh. and um, we're going to need to look at um, replacing her, and the thought was possibly sharing another part timer or a part timer with another community. So we'll just we leave, leave that there. On. Right. Yeah. IT person, this is something we were talking about too with possibly Halifax, maybe. Correct. I've had sharing. a conversation with their person, so it seems like there's some interest there and might be worth pursuing. Perfect. And then we had spoken with um, Noreen from um, Halifax about taking over as our ACO, Animal Control Officer, and Animal Inspector upon um, Frank's retirement. So we'll have to keep moving with that. Is and there see. interest? There was interest. Um, I spoke with her several years ago, maybe a year and a half ago at this point, and she was interested, and Charlie Seelig was helping as well. So I think we just need to reconnect and make sure that that's going to happen now okay. that Frank has given us yep. a date. Right. He's done um, June 30th. <laughs> oh. Do you have a question? Yeah. Okay. So with combining services with Halifax for fire and EMS, what would that mean? It's not combining. It would be sharing services. Possibly, you know, we don't really know what it's going to look like. It might just mean that they cover a couple of shifts for us um, over the weekends when we don't have enough people. So we're not sure exactly how it's going to shake out, but it's something that we want to explore. We're actually having, we had a study done and um, we have the results which we will be accepting at plan to accept at our next meeting and then we'll be discussing it with MRI who were the consultants on March 19th you're welcome to come in we're going to talk about the study their findings their suggestions uh, the study after we accept it will be online so you'll be able to get it on the website as well if you wanted to read it but um, the 19th will be a um, good meeting to learn more about um, opportunities for shared services uh, let's see. Community roundtable, um, Maureen. Can we just your? go back to animal control? Yeah. So essentially, we have three and a half months to we get are, that we done. We need to get that done. Yeah. So, so if that's that probably something, needs to come off the parking lot and onto the agenda. Yeah, I mean, if that's going to work. If it's going to work. Great. If not, we have to start a search. Right. On that. Do you want to reach out to Charlie yeah, and see if Maureen is still interested? Okay. 
perfect. Community Roundtable, Maureen Springer, Jason Frazier. This is something that um, they had uh, requested to kind of get together with everybody and talk about um, budgets. I mean, we're in the budget cycle now, and I believe we already have the school's budgets. So I think, though, when we had the meeting where everybody came in at the time we were mm -hmm. introducing Rich Bowling, mm -hmm. Uh, there was a lot of positive feedback, and I think maybe this should be a community roundtable once every four months or six months, not necessarily, and leave the subject matter a little nebulous, okay? More of an update, what's going on around the yeah, town. Yeah, what's happening in your department yeah. that, yeah. right. Yeah. So I'd like to see this stay on. Well, why don't we, after town meeting, try to schedule something again? Right. I don't know if the summer would be appropriate because people take vacation, but maybe in September. Put something together. Yeah. So you might want to take off uh, Maureen and Jason's name. And just and do. Community Roundtable and put Board of Selectmen. Well, okay. well it's, it's more um, Town Department Roundtable, right? Okay. Yeah. Because not rather than community. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do a Town Department. All hmm. right. Master Plan for Plimpton. Uh, what we have um, in lieu of that we have decided to apply for a grant to do kind of a mini master plan for the town campus property. Can so we, we applied for a grant for the, that. The scouts for Thank you observing. for coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I hope you come back on the nineteenth. It'll be a good meeting. Yeah. We expect you every Monday evening now. <laughs> good night. All right, so um, we're doing a, um, a, a mini master plan um, for the townhouse uh, campus and just uh, applied for a grant for it and we'll see. Well, actually, we got the mother. grants, but yes. I'll report that in the grants. <laughs> or Liz can. All right, so DOR advisory committee, financial best practices, are we done? I think we are. I mean, we've completed. Yes, and I think in a sense it's uh, when we sit down with the auditors. That's really a continuation. Okay. Okay. So do you want to scratch that, the DOR advisory committee? Because it's you, me, and Susan Ossoff. And yeah, but we killed that, didn't we? Um, I don't know. Did we? I thought we? we did. Did we? Uh, the, I think we voted to do to end it. Did we? I thought you yeah, did, and then we established our internal financial team, which Perfect. is myself, okay. Barbara Gomez, Colleen Moran, so we and can Wendy Jones. So we can take that off, and when we have the auditors in will we'll have we'll, new we can still review some of the things yeah perfect you know the thing that we didn't do that i thought was part of that report is is particularly on budget process maybe starting in november in all of us meeting whether that committee or i mean it feels like what we didn't get done this year is the board of selectmen and finance kind of talking in general terms at the beginning of the process um yeah. Uh, they want to change the budget process next year great. to make me part of it. Um, mm -hmm. That was something I spoke to them about last night. So we're going to try to get, set it up like a lot of other towns do. I mean, my um, head and said, have more of a direct link. My head said is that Liz does the budget next next year, um, and then it goes to finance committee to be reviewed, poked at, you know. Right. Uh, and I think that makes sense, and it'll be a great time to look at it. And one piece I'd love to see in there is maybe November, Finance Committee, us, maybe the assessors all sit down sure. together and kind of vision where we're headed. Um, we need to start using the model that was built from uh, Collins Group. Yeah. So that when we look at things, we see the whole context of the town, you know, out five or ten years. So we get an idea. What do we... The conversation we just had on the roads. Right. You know, that's big money. It is so, big money. So maybe that's what needs to go into the parking lot is um, this um, um, revisioning of, of um, broad but view reporting financial. and budgeting. Right. Okay. I'll jump into that one over the summer. Okay. Okay. All right. Personnel policy, employee handbook. I thought we finished the policies, didn't we? We had. Um, you know, I, I think they're probably still kind of scattered, and I, that seems like a nice one to see what we have, get it all into one place, see what we don't have, and, um, you know, when we all get bored in uh, August, we'll be ready project. to go. I yes. think Liz should, you know, 
Run I've that. been working on yeah. it a little bit already. Okay. Um, at first it started out kind of piecemeal. Um, Barbara was coming to me with some different suggestions that wage and personnel will be looking yep. at later this month. Um, and I was kind of chiming in on some of those. Um, but I have the whole, I have the handbook as well as the wage and personnel um, bylaw piece. Oh, and perfect. I think we need She'd to sort of fit like the municipal bylaws, zoning bylaws, and now we have the personnel policy in there. And, you know. Yeah, like the financial yeah. policies. It's just. Yeah. We have these right. things all. Right. So we know what we're doing. Okay. okay. All right. So we'll uh, hopefully address that one this summer. Um, outdoor recreation plan. The open I think that meant we were going to go to the East Bay the Grill and have a few pops. Is that what that is? No, I think this is different. Um, I think we don't have an active recreation commission no, right no. now. There has been some talk about the need for ADA compliant stuff at Dennett. Mm -hmm. um, um, now they have a Warren article, right, for the playground? They do. Oh. To do over to, the to playground. To bring it up to ADA dinner. standards. How is it? Huh. I had, um, I, uh, for this year? For this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. For a large sum of money. Large sum of money. Can we leave this on for a minute? It, it, where it fits in my mind is in the campus. That when we, w once the police station is built and we start to figure out what we're going to do within the building, and also what we're gonna do with the land out here. Recreation is a key part. We got the two ball fields. There's the question of bringing the basketball court back down. Um, I think it should fit in there. So I don't wanna lose sight of it mm -hmm. because I think we wanna make sure that there's young people in this environment. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if they got the baseball teams or not. They were struggling for mm -hmm. I think they've gone to Halifax. They did last year, but they were very close um, this Having year. Having enough people? Yeah. But I never heard whether they got the three or four. Yeah, I'm not, they needed. I'm not sure either. So can we? Yeah, you, you want to leave that one up? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, and then uh, the last one looked like historical building lease, and we scratched that one off. We got that yeah. one done. So um, we have made some progress, but we still have got um, some things that we need to address going forward. No okay. lack for work. No, absolutely. There's always something to do. All right, so we already did Liz's report. Um, you did the correspondence already. Um, any other business to discuss? Okay. Dates to remember. We have got um, our next meeting will be on the 12th. And then we meet on the 19th. And... Four two, there's a okay. Yeah, is there? A, uh, are we off a week in March? I don't know. There's, no, there's the, no holiday. No, we shouldn't be. Yeah, no, so we'll be meeting every too. Monday yeah. in March. All right, and then board's goals for coming year. We've got um, economic development, so we're just kind of leaving that on for now as a focus, but not a major focus. Financial management, anything new to report there? I think it's the whole question of um, moving the budget process and the reporting process the way it's done now to the new process, making sure the right people are involved and you know that, that'll kick off after town meeting. Okay, so that's um, definitely something we wanna get tightened up. It's gonna be a big project. It is a big project. Public safety. Uh, you I had big news tonight. Yeah. <laughs> we did, and I think we covered that. And, uh, Very good. Very good. Well done. Yeah, absolutely well done. We, we just, uh, you know, it's sort of been mentioned offhandedly. Uh, we'll have stuff coming up along the way. I think we're going to have some traffic and parking issues sure. and just be prepared for some fun okay. along the way. Uh, grants, we were awarded from Old Colony Planning Council two DLTA grants, um, Division of yes. Local Technical, Technical Assistance. Assistance. Thanks, Liz. Um, we got one for the, um, the mini master plan and then uh, one for helping us develop comprehensive uh, permit regulations for our affordable good job. housing. So yeah, that was good. Um, we, um, we don't know if the plan's been accepted yet. Which one? The housing production plan. 
Do you know if the state's accepted our plan yet? You heard no, from Lori? I haven't heard anything from that. All right. Um, want me to check in yeah. with Lori? Yeah, you check in with Lori and see if she she's was, heard? We did the vote. I remember doing that vote It was in submitted, and I know it takes some time for the state to uh, accept it. Did Lori submit it? Lori submitted it, I believe. Okay. Let me check in with her. Okay. Because I remember that came up. Okay. And the board had voted and everything. You had the planning board vote, which right. is what Lori was waiting right. for, she right? She was waiting for that. Okay. okay. Let All me right. check in on that. Um, volunteerism. Anything new to report? No, I think just what we've kind of touched on as we've gone. Okay. That's going to be another one after town meeting to amp up the energy around it. Well, you know what we should do at town meeting is do some type of recognition for our volunteers, whether they just stand up. I agree. And, and we and give them a round of applause, something. Yeah. That everybody. You would have probably at least half to two thirds of the room stand well, up. Well, that's it. Yeah, that's it. And, I mean, yeah. those are the people that, it's the yeah. same people that do most everything, but I think we should do something to recognize them at town meeting. It, another discussion for another night, but I've looked at some what other towns do and uh, there's a lot of things we could be thinking about, T-shirts and stuff Something. like this. Something, yeah. Know, so Little yeah. perks, okay. All right, technology. Uh, right now we're, uh, I think, uh, from what Liz told me, Michael's getting ready to move the uh, email addresses to the server. Correct. Which is one of the big, all the computers are in now, right? Um, except one, which I talked to Wendy today, and she is going to take it. There okay. was some question about whether or not their vision program oh, okay. would work with the newest version of Windows. Okay. Um, yeah. So Michael's taking care of figuring that out. Yeah. Um, and that so Wednesday, yeah. we're um, planning to do that. Did we, Tom Milius, he's all set as far as having... Yeah, they gave him um, Kathy's old computer. Okay, great. Um, and she was getting that established for him, and she has one of the new ones. Right. So I think the computers are done. Projector's done. The codification is moving along. Uh, Tara's doing a great job. I think we're we're getting we're there. Getting there. Yeah. Okay. I don't expect any hiccups by the June thirtieth. I think we'll be able to report. Everything's done and in good shape. Oh, that's terrific. All right, minutes. I don't think we've got two five, two twelve, two twenty six. 226 we have. Do we have 226? The yeah. regular session minutes? Yeah. I read the minutes you sent out and I yeah. thought they were fine. Yeah, That's I thought yours were. Oh, okay. All right. I thought, um, all right. I had no problem with those as well. So we'll hold 25, 212, and um, you want to make a motion to accept the minutes? I make a motion we accept the minutes of 226. As written? Second. As all right. I'll, all right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Oh. And then um, we'll have minutes from tonight for our next meeting as well. All right, um, Rance and Raves. Want to go first? Sure. I mean, after the week we've had, the Raves are for these crews that have come in. I've seen Mississippi license plates. I've seen Quebec. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really something. Uh, I have a little bit of a rant for Eversource, not with the crews. They were wonderful. But the fact that we seem to be the last town on their agenda. And I've had a couple of people come to me and say, how come, because we're dependent on well water, where the other towns, you know, a lot of theirs is supplied. Right. Um, and I think when this is all settled down and maybe we need a couple of weeks or whatever, we should think about talking to Eversource about what is the protocol that they used because it just seemed like, you know, we just got the last person yesterday with power. Wow. That's a long time to it's be It's a out. long time. And they, we have lots of animals, as we all know, in town. You know, it's not just the people. It's all these animals, too. So that's my ray for the crews and rant for the management. All right. Um, my, um, my rave would be, um, it's kind of a short story, the... Um, I was out walking my dogs around the bogs like I do every morning and it was um, it was Saturday and one of my neighbor's trees, actually two had come down on, one came down on a screened in porch, one came down uh, across his driveway and his, another tree in his front yard was coming up by the root ball and was 
going to come down on his house. Mm. So um, as I finished my walk, all of my neighbors were there trying to help them get this yeah. tree off. You know, pickup trucks and uh, come alongs, and yeah. they ended up dropping the tree. And it was just, it was really neat to see Plimpton helping Plimpton, yep. you know, it people really getting was. out, helping each other. And um, that's one of the great things about this town. I saw on Facebook, just to follow up on that, somebody who had power, they ran a cord all the way out to the street, put a post with outlets <laughs> so if you needed to charge your phone oh. you could drive up to the street stop and put it in. <laughs> isn't that cool that it's is cool. so nice yeah. that is so yeah, nice yeah. Uh, uh, so I, I guess my my rave is um and we have a lot going on as we all know um and somehow uh, I, my rave is mainly liz is Oh, thank you. Um, making sure all the details are taken care of, and I don't. We couldn't have survived the last few weeks without Liz. Um, thank you. And and an extension of that is we do have a lot going on, and uh, uh, we'll probably miss a couple things along the way, but um, we're working pretty hard. Yeah, here, here. That's it. I couldn't have said it better. It just, it's difficult for three people to manage all of this. It was next to impossible. It's a full-time job, and having Liz here is wonderful. I have to admit, when the sewerage <laughs> went, I said, thank God for Liz. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the sewage is backing up in the townhouse. I'm glad it's Liz dealing with it, not me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is that a backhanded compliment? <laughs> Uh, just so that doesn't become a headline, that's all straightened it's out. All, yes. yeah. That's all, yeah. And, that's and Liz put that on yeah, um, Facebook, that the townhouse was closed, yep. you know, emergency yep. closing, so yes. not a great way to communicate. All right, do we have anything else for tonight? I don't all think right, so. so we meet again on Monday, and um, have a, a great weekend, everyone. Say stay, say stay, tongue-tied, say stay, stay safe, and <laughs> we'll see you next week. Good night. Good night. Yahoo. <laughs>